Karl Marx once said that France was that country where the class struggle is always fought to the finish. I think you can see this uh, idea graphically expressed in the events of the last five weeks. Uh, events which, as in 1968, which I remember quite vividly, I was there at the time, events which seemed to fall like a thunderbolt from a clear blue sky. And practically overnight, this magnificent movement of the masses of the French workers, the French youth, in the best, the finest traditions of the French Revolution. I think, in fact, one could argue that the revolution is in the blood of the French people. It might sound a strange thing for a Marxist to say, but you've only got to visit uh, Paris, even without the present uh, events. Walk along any street, you'll see the, the memories of the French Revolution, the great Fre French Revolution, are still present in, it, in all the street names and so on and so forth. Oh no, this is the best traditions of France. The tradition whereby the movement emerges suddenly from below. And what a surprise, a rather unpleasant surprise, I think, uh, just before Christmas, a nice little Christmas present for the French ruling class and the European working cl uh, ruling class, who, who of course are following these events uh, in horror. Yes, and it wasn't so long ago, by the way, Let's cast our mind back not very far, not, not to 68 or 1789. No, no, let's, let's cast our mind back, if we can, to the situation in France in May of last year, May, May 2017, where, as you recall, the, 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 the uh, European uh, capitalists and uh, ruling class were, were waiting with bated breath for the results of the French presidential election. They were afraid it would be won by some extremist of the left or the right. Le Pen was uh, the favourite candidate at the time. But no, 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 no. To their tremendous relief, the, 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 the sigh of relief was audible in every single uh, parliament and chancellery throughout, throughout Europe. This wonderful man, uh, this uh, archangel, suddenly appeared uh, with wings. He came down from heaven or some place or other where he'd been uh, hidden for some years. Monsieur Manuel Macron, the great leader of the centre. The centre won, yes, and all the, uh, all the uh, church bells in Europe uh, were ringing out in celebration of this fact. The extremes had been defeated. The mon these monsters, this monstrous dragon of extremism was slain by this knight in shining armour, this man who apparently could walk on water. Well, this man who uh, 18 months ago was walking on the water seems to have sunk somewhat uh, beneath the waves. And uh, you see, he, he really thought this Macron he must, must, have, must have been an even bigger idiot than, the, than, than Theresa May, and that's saying something, an even bigger idiot than the other idiots in Europe. Really believed it. I mean, for goodness sake, he had the dream, he had the, actually had the, the, the audacity to believe that France would, would actually dominate Europe. Oh yes, he was going to, he was going to give a few lessons to uh, Madame Merkel. She's also sunk, by the way, it seems to be in, in fashion of late. Shows the political instability in Europe, incidentally. Yes, he actually goes to the White House, to, to uh, New York, to give, to Washington rather, to give lectures in politics to uh, to Donald Trump. I don't think Trump was particularly impressed. He seemed more interested in flicking dandruff off, uh, off Macron's shoulder. That was quite an amusing encounter. No, this midget, this dwarf, this idiot is now, was so opinionated that he thought that he was going to bestride the world like a colossus, just to quote uh, Shakespeare on Julius, uh, Julius Caesar. And yet, this uh, wonderful saviour of bourgeois democracy all of a sudden is sunk without trace. I noticed that uh, whereas the day, uh, incidentally it's not true what they said uh, 18 months ago, it's not true that he, he had an overwhelming vote of confidence with the French people, he did not. There was a huge abstention at the time which we pointed out. And we also predicted, I predicted in articles in, uh, I wrote at that time, that this so-called centre, this marvellous centre that they were building up and they were praising to the skies, would turn out to, to be a gigantic zero at the heart of French society and French politics. That's just what it is. 
I think at the centre, the political centre, my friends, which they're now trying to peddle in Britain with this idea of a, a national government and so on, all this nonsense, which I hope the Labour leaders will reject. But in any case, the idea, well, we must reconstruct the centre. What they're really concerned about in all countries, including the United States, if it comes to that, is this question of polarisation. Yes, but the crisis of capitalism and the terrible burdens the oppression of the people by the uh, capitalist state and by the ruling class makes polarization inevitable. Polarization to the right, yes, that also exists. But polarization above all to the left, that's what concerns them. And in France, I repeat, following the, the, the age-old tradition of the French working class, it's a spontaneous insurrectionary movement from below. And what a movement it is. It must uh, warm the hearts of, of, of all of us that are sincere defenders of the working class and socialism. And it's the complete definitive answer to all the, what, we, what Dylan Thomas would call the willy wet legs, the, uh, the skeptics, the idiots, the burnt out cases, people, the, the riffraff left over from the past, who've succumbed to moods of depression and think that fascism is just around the corner and so on. It's not fascism that's just around the corner. It's an enormous movement of the working class. By the way, you see this in Hungary also, which is a country which apparently had drifted far from the right. Well, you see now the reaction of the Hungarian working class. And I believe both in Hungary and in Holland and even in, in, in Canada, I think, in Tunisia and other countries. I noticed in, in Egypt, incidentally, that's quite amusing. The government has actually banned the wearing of yellow jackets. You know, that's in preparation. Better safe than sorry, I suppose. You know that shows the fear of the ruling class. That this example, this marvelous example of the French working class—that's what it boils down to—and the French youth will, will spread to other countries, which it is doing already. Particularly, that's the case in, in Belgium. Yes, but what a marvelous movement it has been. This is not finished yet, by the way. It's not clear that it will finish. You see, there's an old uh, uh, proverb. Appetite comes with eating. Oh yes, appetite comes with eating. This uh, idiot uh, Macron, this reactionary uh, swine, that's what he is, a reactionary pastor, the so-called nice, liberal, smiling face of liberalism at the centre. Yes, what, what kind of a smiling face is that that kicks the poorest section of society? And introduces all kinds of vicious reactionary legislation, cuts, attacks of all sorts, and of course, the last straw, this is dialect, pure dialectics, by the way. You see, the working class, both in France and other countries, yes, they will accept and they will accept and they will accept many things until finally the limit is reached to quote physics. It's like a phase transition, a critical phase, as you say, is reached where finally people say, well, that's it. We've had enough. Enough is enough. And that moment was reached in France about five weeks ago with this enormous, tremendous movement with no leadership. No, that's interesting. No leadership, no organization, no political party. Many of them de deny the, the, the need for political parties. Well, that's a mistake. And in point of fact, the, the man that's benefited most from this is precisely uh, Mélenchon, the France Insoumise, this new, new movement that he's formed, which is a left-wing movement, a very left-wing movement, as a matter of fact is benefiting from this naturally. But this is undoubtedly a spontaneous movement in the good, good old French tradition of the masses of workers of all sorts, all kinds of workers, public sector, private sector also, students, school students are involved, intellectuals are involved, lawyers are involved. The latest I've seen is that the police are now presenting their demands <coughs> to this reactionary government. Everything has come together around the, the, the initial catalyst, if you like, that's the correct word for it, which was this attempt to raise taxes on, on fuel. You know, a, a, a wonderful, uh, by the way, what a wonderful me measure from the standpoint of the reactionary Greens, you know, oh, it's saving the planet. Yes, saving the planet at the expense of the poorest people in society. This is not uh, acceptable for many. We want to save the planet, we want to... Uh, uh, of course, save the environment, that's perfectly correct. But the way to do that is not to put the burden on the poor people. Incidentally, when Macron finally uh, felt the fire under his ass and was obliged to, uh, to jump 
and present itself in a very contrite and humble and uh, modest manner, which is against his nature, of course. The, the man is, a, apart from a fool, he's a complete egomaniac. He was compelled to eat humble pie. Come on television. Millions of people, I think 20-odd million people saw this programme. That was more than more people than watched the football match when France uh, won against Italy, wasn't it? I can't remember. I don't follow football, as you know. But in any case, it was a huge audience of people. By the way, that's one indication of, 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 of the development of, of, of a pre-revolutionary situation. It's where the mass of people who are normally indifferent to politics begin to take an interest in politics and begin to take direct action into their own hands on the streets. Now, isn't that the position of, that you have in France? Of course it is. And therefore, this idiot uh, Macron was obliged to come and tell him, well, what an idiot. Even then, he comes, uh, he pretends to be contrite and very sorry. I'm sorry if I've offended some of, some of you with my words, he says. And he's sitting at a gilded desk, a golden desk in the uh, Elysee Palace. That's hard, hardly the way to appeal to millions of French citizens who are suffering from uh, Poverty, and they are, of course, suffering from poverty, as in many other countries. And therefore, it doesn't wash. Therefore, he made a first attempt on the 6th of December, I think it was, where he, he tempered, he was kind enough in his, in his gracious majesty, he's like Louis XIV, you know, poor imitation. Um, in his gracious majesty, he temporarily, kindly withdrew this tax, uh, this tax imposition. That didn't work. I repeat, appetite comes with eating. The masses saw this correctly as a sign of weakness and they pressed forward with new demonstrations. And what demonstrations? You know, militant, ferocious demonstrations again in the French cities, clashes with the police and so on. Some people were killed, other people were injured uh, and, and so on. And by the way, what an advertisement for this wonderful bourgeois democracy, isn't it? I'll tell you what, in reality, in France, in democratic, lovely Republican France, They've just, in effect, abolished the right to protest. That's what it amounts to, these uh, very harsh repressive measures. You've got pictures of poor little school kids kneeling on the floor. You'd think this was uh, Cambodia or some place like that, or uh, Egypt, I don't know. Young kids, teenagers, kneeling down with their ha hands on their heads, surrounded by these uh, brutal uh, repressive uh, armed riot police. That's f nice, democratic, central, center, uh, Republican, liberal France. Now, that's France for you. It's the real face of the bourgeoisie, the real face of bourgeois democracy and bourgeois liberalism. liberalism. There you have it. And of course, this is infuriated people. People are, are furious. And this rage, no matter what happens in the short run, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen now. That didn't work, the uh, ridiculous, uh, trivial offer that he gave to people. P people were not having risked their lives and risked their, their, their physical integrity, they weren't going to settle for peanuts, which is all this, this imbecile was offering them. Therefore, very quickly after the, second, after the next wave of demonstrations, he was compelled again to appear from his, his gilded uh, desk. And this time he did make some serious uh, concessions, increasing the uh, minimum wage and uh, retreat, partially retreating on pensions, partially retreating on tax, I note, however, one thing he didn't do was to uh, retreat on the wealth. Well, he'd abolished this wealth tax in France. He's known as the le président des riches, the president, the rich man's president. Of course he is. Same as Theresa May is the rich man's uh, uh, prime minister. And Merkel was the representative of the rich man. And Trump is the representative of, of, of the rich in the States. They all represent the same class. And that's a fact. The fact that he didn't, uh, he didn't reintroduce this wealth tax at a time when, when these concessions that he's made, I think it's about 100 billion euros worth, if I, my memory serves me correctly, that's going to cause a huge deficit. And by the way, here's another little contradiction. In the words of Sam, uh, uh, Stan Laurel, I mentioned this last time, you know, here's another fine mess you've gotten me into. By making these concessions to the pressure of the masses, Macron now will have a huge budget deficit, which will violate the 3% limit of, uh, of Brussels and the European Union. So there'll be another clash now. It won't be Italy that's clashing with the, the uh, Euro European Union. It'll be France, which is the second country in Europe, and therefore... It's a nice little mess.
that they've got, apart from Brexit, of course, which we dealt with last time. So what's going to happen now? Well, I don't know. I mean, it seems that last weekend's demonstrations, they were still considerable, by the way. It took place all over France. It's not true that the movement has uh, ceased to exist. It's still there. There were sizable demonstrations all over, not just in Paris, where, of course, the police repression was uh, absolutely ferocious. And that played a role. Plus this terrible shooting incident in uh, Strasbourg also played a role. And as always with terrorism, played into the hands of the state, giving them an excuse to increase repression. Yes, but there were demonstrations all over, in Toulouse, in Bordeaux, in Dijon, in Lille, in Nantes, uh, in Marseille, all over France. And therefore this, no matter what happens now, it is possible the movement will die down, partly because of the concessions, and partly because of weariness, tiredness, and partly because it's, it's the Christmas season. So it's possible that it may die down. Yes, but the, the, the rage and anger will still be there. I repeat, Macron's supporters collapse. Incidentally, one interesting point is that the, the public support in the opinion polls for these demonstrations, which you'd expect uh, because of the pr press propaganda, they might lose support. On the contrary, the support was con consistently between 60 and 70, 75 percent even, you know. Whereas Macron's support, it was 67 percent, I think, the day after he was elected uh, in May of last year, it's now about 23 percent. I mean, this is unprecedented. Talk about François Hollande, his, his collapse support, so his, his support collapsed. Macron's support has collapsed even faster than that. So therefore, this has solved nothing. And therefore, there's a fundamental sea change in, in the mood in France, which is mainly reflected, by the way, despite all the talk about fascism and Le Pen and so Le Pen also will gain something. But that's nothing compared to the gain of, uh, of Mélenchon, who's now the key, the, the most important left leader in France. And therefore, the whole pendulum now will shift sharply to the left. I think Macron is finished. He might hang on for a while on the basis of making these concessions, but these just have piled up other contradictions which he cannot solve. And therefore, my friends, the, the lesson is, do not put your trust in the political center and the, this myth that's been built up. On the contrary, the future belongs precisely to class polarization, to the left and to the right, which will prevent, will present us with tremendous opportunities. Those of us on the Marxist left will have enormous possibilities to build the necessary forces to provide what? What is missing for the, from the uh, gilets jaunes, from the, uh, the uh, red, red uh, coat, uh, the, the yellow, yellow jacket uh, movement, is precisely what is needed, is organization and leadership. It is, it appears to be leaderless. This is not a good thing. That's one of the reasons why maybe the movement will die down, precisely because of the lack of that fundamental instrument which is necessary to change society, which is a revolutionary party with a revolutionary policy, program, perspectives and strategy and a revolutionary leadership. In the last analysis, that and that alone is what will guarantee our success.